Well, the Biden administration is adding another ripple to its Green New Deal agenda while Americans are shivering under several blankets, and they really are this fall because they can't afford enough heat. John Kerry and his climate fanatics have been jetting in luxury over to climate conferences, usually in warmer places, signing signing up to pay reparations, if that's even the right word for it, to poor countries that agree to phase out fossil fuels. Well, my next guest says, if these countries want to dig their way out of poverty, they need more fossil fuels, not less. Joining us now is Alec, Alex Epstein, Center for Industrial Progress founder and CEO and author of Fossil Future, Why Global Human Flourishing Requires More Oil, Coal, and Natural Gas, Not Less. It's such a wonderful point, Alex. Good to have you here. And, and the bottom line is only prosperous countries can afford pollution controls. And, and you're dooming these poor countries to poverty if you rule out fossil fuel for them, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a double injustice. Uh, it is totally punishing the free world for using low-cost yeah. fossil fuels, but that's an action that's made the whole world better. That's why we have globally increasing life expectancy and globally decreasing climate-related disaster deaths. So this idea that we've ruined the world and have to pay for it is the exact opposite of the truth. Had it not been for our use of fossil fuels, the poor world would be far worse off, including far more vulnerable from climate. Now, what we do owe the poor world is do not interfere with them using fossil fuels, which is exactly what this unjust reparations thing does. Mm -hmm. It pays off a bunch of dictators in exchange for not allowing people to use the fossil fuels. They need to be free and prosperous. Well, and by the way, forgive my cynicism, I covered the emerging markets for 12 years for the Wall Street Journal. I know these, how these countries work. You give them money for all, any kind of program, and through a very circuitous route, a lot of that money, if not most of it, if not all of it in some cases, ends up in Swiss bank accounts. I mean, it's not going to go to the poor people. It's not going to go to solar panels in, in Nigeria. It's going to end up in Switzerland, uh, you know, spending, uh, spending money for, for these dictators' fancy cars and such. I mean, what's really needed is freedom. It's not a mystery how countries rise out of poverty. We've seen it over and over and over around the world with our history, with much of Asia's history. The way you rise out of poverty is you liberate people, including you liberate them to use the most cost-effective sources of energy. That's what's needed. Anything that gets in the way of that is immoral. And certainly, as you indicate, paying off a bunch of dictators lining their pockets to keep their people unfree and keep them not having fossil fuels is just totally immoral. Well, and by the way, there's, there's this thing called dependency theory, which is what a lot of developmental economics is based on. That is to say, poor countries are poor because rich countries are rich. And therefore, the way you solve the world's problems is by making the rich countries more poor. That will somehow even things out. Of course, the, the people behind these theories and, and the John Kerry's and every they still get their fancy uh, jet trips to these conferences and so forth. They still uh, turn up their thermostat if they're Obama to 80 degrees in the wintertime. But the rest of us schlobs are going to live a pretty poor existence. It's just such a fallacy. I mean, we have so much history of economic freedom that shows that yeah. economic freedom makes everyone wealthier. You know, people today can afford more than a, a billionaire could 100 years ago. We just need more freedom in the world and more freedom to use the most cost-effective forms of energy, which for most people is still fossil fuels yes. and will remain that for decades to well, come. Well, meanwhile, Alex, we continue this war uh, the, the Biden administration, administration does against fossil fuel production in the United States. They're fine for the dirty fuels that come from Venezuela and Saudi Arabia, but the cleaner fuels that we have right here on our own soil, they say they're verboten. They have their new restrictions on oil and gas, uh, re on gas production, despite what we hear from the administration about leasing increasing. If you look at a list, by the way, of leasing since the Reagan administration, you see, see, look at that way down at the bottom, you have the, the first 19 months of the Biden administration. It's point one three million acres uh, that are being leased out compared to all those other numbers above it. It is it's a lie to say that leasing has increased. And what's extraordinary is we have so much oil that we could tap easily. The McKinsey and Company just came out with a report that Gulf oil, which is much cleaner than the oil from the rest of the world, we could produce two million more barrels a day. From, from the Gulf oil if we wanted to. Instead, they're talking about cutting back on Gulf oil production. Go ahead. 
I mean, just look at one of the stories today, which is diesel shortages. The U.S. should be drowning in diesel. If you look at the basic facts, you have global growing demand for diesel. You have a lot of Canadian oil that could supply our refiners with the kind of oil it needs. And then we have massive increases in production that we could build refining capacity around. Instead, diesel is declining in the U.S. because we're against Canadian oil. We're against diesel refining. We're against starting to be against our own production. It's just a totally self-made problem. And the fault is the anti uh, the global anti fossil fuel movement, which Biden is a major member yeah. of, though not the only member of. So the last 15 years have been a disaster and we need to reverse course. The latest anti leasing thing shows they're just punishing more, which is going to lead to more problems. It's it's extraordinary. And again, we have everything we need to solve the problem. It should just be like that. Uh, Alex Epstein, good to see you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here.